Hello world, it's Craig. If you've ever felt the need to understand Intel hex file format, say when you're having trouble getting an EEPROM programmer to work or you're writing some file transfer code, then my next video may be useful to you. That's going to be a short video going over the Intel hex file format. But when looking through old literature or data books, you may come across the file format called BPNF. The Intel hex file format that most of us use today, or many of us use today, was not Intel's first stab at making a file transfer format. The honor belongs to BPNF file format, or just PN format, depending on the media that was used. Now, Intel was making RAMs and masked ROMs in 1969, well before 1971, when they introduced the microprocessor and the EEPROM. Since ROMs needed to be fabricated to match the customer's truth table and PROMs needed to be programmed, Intel came up with this BPNF for conveying these truth tables, which is really just the memory contents for that device between the customer and Intel. And despite its limitations, BPNF was the standard from 1970 or 1969 until about 74 when the Intel hex file format finally came along. This catalog is 1973, and it doesn't even mention any other format besides this BPNF. So for a long time, Intel accepted the user data on printed forms, and the forms were published in their catalogs, along with the device specification sheets. The form was filled out, and then it was either faxed or mailed into Intel. Well, here's an interesting thing on the mask options for the chip selects. And I mentioned this in a video I did some time ago about uh, the different chip selects if you're interested in that. Okay, so let's look at the BPNF format. It stands for begin, positive, negative, and finish or final. And while it served the basic function of transferring a file for a ROM or a PROM, it was pretty unsophisticated. You know, binary object files were better for programming and data transfer because even at that time, object code had a mechanism to move the destination memory pointer. Now, BPNF, it's a text-based file, usually ASCII, but for some period of time, Intel did allow customers to send in 5-bit BOTO code. But in either case, it's a human-readable text file format. You can just open it, read it, and edit it with a text file. The preferred media was punched paper tape, but punch cards could also be accepted, but it was a slightly modified format called just the PN file format. So this catalog is from... 1978, and Intel was accepting either BPNF or a non-Intel hex paper tape format, which just had the address and uh, a start and finish character. And then they were also accepting their intellect format. Now note they were calling it the intellect format and not the Intel format yet. Intellect was, of course, their, their uh, development systems. But this intellect format is what we would, we would learn to call uh, just Intel X format. So let's look at this on the BPNF on punched paper tape format. So each memory location is a word field, which would either have four bits or eight bits of data depending on the target device. And each of these word fields began with the start character B for begin and ended with a stop character F for finish or final. Each bit between these had to be either a P for positive or an N for negative. Now, there are two reasons for using positive and negative here instead of ones and zeros. The first was for clarity because some ROMs at the time had negative logic. And it was a time of change when the 4004 came along. Rather than using ones and zeros, it was hoped that using P, meaning positive, and N for negative logic or low level would be somewhat, you know, reduce the potential for confusion. But things like this table made everything much more clear when they gave examples of, you know, an instruction and then how it should be submitted as either uh, P's or N's. So you can see for the 4004, all zeros should be submitted as all P's. And here for the uh, 8008 or the 8080, if it's a one, then it's a P, and if it's a zero, then it's an N. So the second reason that they used the P's and N's instead of zero and ones is that zero and one are adjacent. You know, zero is three zero in hex, or zero zero one one zero 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 zero. Well, the one character is just three one, meaning all the bits are the same except for the least significant bit. It's a one rather than zero. 
Since there's only one bit difference, a single bit error would be, you know, in all likelihood, completely missed. Where with P and N, there's a four bit difference between those in the ASCII table. So that makes an undiscovered single bit error that more, you know, unlikely to not be caught. Now, when submitting for ROMs on paper tape, the entire contents of the ROM were included from memory location zero up to the top memory. Since the entire device was being masked and programmed, there wasn't a need for the data to be located in the device. And there were no destination addresses in this BPNF format. There simply had to be a one-to-one -one correspondence between the word field on tape and the memory locations in the ROM. Now, even unused memory blocks needed to be defined in this file. Just skipping or ignoring unused memory was considered a formatting error or an overrun or an underrun. And the bits, by the way, were just most significant down to the least significant bit. So the normal order that we would use in instructions or data today, big Indian or little Indian didn't come up because that was dependent on how the ROM was being used rather than how it was actually masked. Now within a word field, there could be no characters between the B and the F other than the, either the four or eight P's or N's. Now there were two exceptions to this P and N rule that I'll mention in a minute. However, between the word fields, there could be any number of characters, such as comments or control characters, which would be completely ignored by the receiving program. But placing these comments between the word fields meant that these comments could not include the letters B or F, since those are reserved for bracketing the data. And when you know the computer's reading this, it's just looking for the start of the next word field in the receiving computer, would get out of sync and trigger a formatting error if we were in a comment and it suddenly came upon a B. And in practice, the receiving program just reads characters until it gets a B, and then the next four or eight characters have to be either the P or N, and they go into memory. And then we get to the F, and that has to be there. And then anything after that, the computer just throws into the bit bucket until another B comes along. And then when another B comes along, then it just loads the next value. Now, Intel did suggest that it may be a good idea to occasionally include the word field number, meaning just the memory location. But those were just comments for the human reading the file to make sure everything came out even in the end, since the receiving computer would just throw them out. If somebody has seen where Intel created a version of the BPNF that processed these addresses to set a memory pointer in the receiving computer, let me know where that's documented. I just haven't seen where these addresses that were in the comments were anything other than for human readers. So back to those two exceptions to the uh, P and N rule that I mentioned earlier. There was a shortcut if the entire ROM contents was not going to be programmed. So leaving space at the end, or if there were unused memory locations within the ROM. Rather than the normal word field, the word field B asterisk and F could be used where N would be a number, and the asterisk was a code to repeat the last word field N more times. And the second ex exception was that you could use an X in here for any data bit rather than the P or the N to rep represent a don't care indicator. And that bit would be left as whatever the default logic was for that device. So for example, if at the end of the data, there were 10 bytes left over unused, the file could have a B X X X in the first unused location and then a B asterisk nine F, and that would leave the last 10 locations unprogrammed. As a last requirement, which was just common practice at the time, the paper tape required you know, a 25 character leader and a 25 character tailor on the trailer on the tape. So that's all there was to BPNF on paper tape. Now, if punch cards were used, then it was called the PN format because the framing characters B and F were dropped. The first card had to be a title card, had the company name and stuff like that. And then because for the potential for cards to be mixed up, each of the data cards started with the decimal starting memory address for that card. Then the data bytes are given but without the B and F bracketing characters. And then finally, each card had to have, there was uh, the truth table number, which was basically the device ID number or the batch job number. Now, if it was a nibble device, there's gonna be 14 data fields across here. And if it's a byte wide device, there's going to be eight data fields across there. 
With the destination address now being required, at least there was the possibility that it could be used to adjust a memory pointer. But again, I haven't seen where that address was actually utilized. Now for filling masked ROM files, the BPNF worked okay, but it was limited in that it had no mechanism to include the destination address, as we mentioned. It was inefficient as far as storage space. It only had rudimentary error checking, and then there was only one kind of data possible. But fortunately, all of these limitations were solved in the next file format that came out, which was the intellect, where is that? Which was the intellect hex file format. I'll talk about that in my next video. While BPNF was mostly of historical interest, understanding that Intel hex file is useful skill for when that file needs to be tweaked sometimes. Okay, that's it. As always, this channel is not monetized and is entirely fueled by likes, shares, comments, and clicking subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.